Joining me now, former police officer Brandon Tatum. He is also the founder and CEO of the Officer Tatum LLC. Brandon, police work. Obviously, you know a lot more about it than most of my viewers. You know a lot more about it than I do. I have made the argument, while obviously there are crappy cops everywhere out there in the history of law enforcement, that's just natural. We tend to forget that these guys also wade through the crap of society all day long, and then we point out whenever they're dirty. Am I wrong? I know you're 100% right. It's unfortunate that we do this, do this in a society where we can tell that humans are evil. So as long as humans are police officers, there's going to be a few evil, bad people out there. As long as humans are doing surgery on you when you go to the hospital, there's going to be some bad people. So I think and I hope and I wish that people would just look at the facts, look at reality, and then base your frustration on whoever is doing the crime, whoever is doing the injustice. And in this case, um, or at least the one that's just come up with George Floyd, it's one officer. Leave the rest of the officers out of it unless they do something specifically. I'm glad you brought up look at the facts because here's something that has completely weirded me out about this entire thing. America is different. This is not 1960. This is 2020. This video came out, and Brandon, maybe you saw something different than I saw. I saw universal condemnation of that cop and what happened on that video from everybody on the left, everybody on the right, everybody in the middle, everybody black, white, Hispanic, every person I know, even, even internet trolls were saying, uh, that's murder, and yet somehow we're burning down 140 cities over something we all agreed on. What got lost? Well, I think Stevie Wonder can see that this was a wrong action by a police officer. It's not that hard to, to determine that. You see a man with his knee on his neck, the man say he can't breathe. I don't care if it's a tactic that's used on the police department. As a former police officer, you cannot do that. And that is exactly why he got fired. That's exactly why he's been charged. I think that the justice was very swift. But this is what I want people to understand. This has nothing to do with George Floyd. This has nothing to do with justice. This has everything to do with revenge. And it has everything to do with these whiny, uh, leftist, brain-dead people who are coming out to steal things, to come up off of profit from free televisions, free Gucci bags. It has blown out of proportion. And I believe that majority of this has never been about George Floyd. And if it was, if somebody want to have the litmus test, if it was about this gentleman in this situation, then after the cop was arrested, we will see no more protests. We will see no more violence. Brandon, I have argued that I think the blaming all this on Antifa is absurd. Yes, I'm fine. You want to designate them a terrorist group? Fine. Obviously, Antifa sucks. I obviously think they're part of it. I feel like that's the biggest cop-out in the world to say, well, it's all Antifa. They're from out of town. It's just all Antifa. Obviously, that's part of it. But why are we unable to talk frankly about certain things in society? Why are we unable to say, well, obviously, there are some black gangs out there who are looting things. Obviously, there are some just flat-out suburban white kids not associated with anybody coming into town to have a little riot weekend and then go back out. This is a diverse protest and riot. Some people are doing the right thing. A a lot of different people are doing bad things, but we don't seem to want to talk about that. Why? We're dying from a slow death of political correctness. Our leaders are cowards. They cannot, they don't want for the life of them, they cannot be seen on camera saying anything negative about black people. I've watched the videos like everybody else in this country. Yeah, I see some Antifa people out there. I see a couple white people out there. I see a tremendous amount of black people running out of Foot Locker with Jordans in their, sh in their hand. I see them beating the living daylights out of white people, yelling, kill the white person. I mean, come on, man. It, 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 we cannot get anything done if people consistently uh, project disingenuous conversations. There are white people a part of this. There are Mexican people. There are black people. But the problem with this is, and the people who are going to hold the bag of blame in this situation, is going to be black people. And let me tell you why. Because there was a black man that was killed. They're yelling, Black Lives Matter. The argument and the frustration is because black people are being hunted down by police. And so the outrage that's necessitated by what happened to a black man by black people in the community with some white people sprinkled in there in Antifa is going to make black people look bad. And, and I don't understand how people are not uh, focused on facts and reality. Black people in America are not getting hunted down by police officers. 
just last year, 2019, 365 days in a year, there was nine black people who were shot unarmed. Most people understand that just because you're unarmed don't mean you're innocent. There was nine black shot unarmed. This year alone in Chicago, Memorial Day weekend, there were 10 black people killed. They ain't even protest on a, on a corner, let alone do a nationwide protest. These people are disingenuous. A lot of them are white and black alike. Why'd you become a cop? And I ask you, I ask it for this reason. I look, I, look, I live in the burbs. I'm not living downtown Houston. I'm not living downtown New York, downtown Chicago, anywhere else. I live in the burbs. But I look at the condition of the police officer in a big city right now, and I wonder why anybody would do the job. You're constantly, constantly under scrutiny. Most of the time, the mayor himself does not have your back. Everybody has a cell phone camera out recording your worst moment. Why did you do it? Because I can't picture anybody doing it. Well, it's because you love the community and you love people more than you love yourself. And, and that's pretty much the, 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 the greatest amongst us. And, and, and there's some rag dolls in there, but the greatest amongst us decide that they want to protect their community and they're going to do it at any cost. Even though you don't get paid that much money, even though your life is in danger and most people are crappy that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and they're having their worst day ever. But you do it because you love the people more than you love yourself. The reason why I initially did it is because I love my family more than I love my own safety and self. And I said, look, I need a job that has benefits. And after I did a ride along, man, I was blown away at the heroism of police officers. And so I did the job. I was able to um, patrol my community the best way I thought was possible. I was able to affect change. And I thought it was the, one of the greatest jobs that anybody could ever do. And, and let me say this, let me correct that. I don't think it's a job, it's a calling. And these people are called and that's why they do it. Hey, thanks so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and like and subscribe. You heard me like it, subscribe. You'll get a lot more of it and a lot more of me.